Imagine, first solo and a meter collision happens right in front of you. We're talking about it in the hangar. Welcome to In The Hangar, I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Dan Milliken. In The Hangar is sponsored by Flying Eyes, who make not only sunglasses, but they make the new ophthalmics, which is regular glasses for those who don't know. And also by Colton Mortgage. They actually answer the phone and they answer your questions. Christy, you remember your first solo? I do remember my first solo. It was a beautiful day. Nothing went wrong. Mm -hmm. I had three adequate landings. Adequate. Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> I, I remember mine. I, I remember uh, the first landing being, I don't know, the second one being good and the third one going back to, I don't know. But what surprised me was how light the plane was because I'd only flown in a 152 with a an, um, an instructor. So the plane was significantly lighter. Yeah, you know what didn't happen during my first solo? A mid-air collision. Yeah, so we're gonna be talking to Shiravan Patel, who has come all the way from Denver, the Centennial Airport where you fly out of. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Now, you're not like nervous like you would be for a first solo right here, are you? Oh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so at least we get to see what it, what it would be like to, when, in that moment when you're on your first solo. Pretty much. <laughs> I've never done anything like this, so this is a first for me. Okay, well, let's set the scene. Yeah. Okay, so what airport were you flying out of? I was flying, flying out of uh, APA, which is Centennial Airport. It's a bit south of Denver, about 30 minutes, and uh, has two parallel runways. It, it's a very busy airport. I'd say it's akin to Addison Airport over here, where you have sometimes very long lines just to Oof. get on the runway. <laughs> I, I, I've flown out, uh, to Centennial a couple of times, and, and our, our sponsor, Colton Mortgage, actually, he has his 210 in a hangar there. Um, go back even further. How, how did you decide you wanted to be a pilot? So. I always knew from a young age I wanted to be a pilot, uh, but I also wanted to be an engineer. So I got that engineering stuff out of the way and I said, hey, you know, what better time than to start a pilot's license? But really, what got me into, you know, started me on that path in aviation is my best friend died. And I said, hey, I don't have all the time in the world. If I'm gonna pursue my passion, I better do it now. Wow. Wow, way to take a tragedy and turn it into something positive. Thank you. Okay. Are you are you planning to where do you want to go with your license? Are you planning to go all the way to ATP and So currently I'm applying for the Air Force as, wow. for a pilot slot and working on my IFR concurrently. So Oh, nice. That's amazing. How, how do you get to the Air Force from uh, Normally I thought you join the Air Force and they teach you to fly. So uh, they like it if you have hours beforehand because they don't want to put you in a plane, spend all this money and you just wash out. So if you ha know have that flying experience, you know you won't get motion sick it's a little bit better for them. It's a better investment. Okay, so then you went, you went and got into the cockpit. Tell us what plane you were flying and, and what it was like you know, leading up to that solo. So I was flying Cessna 65251. It's a 172S, and uh, I, I love the plane. I like fuel-injected planes better than carbureted, less things to worry about. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, my goodness. Here but, we go. Uh, <laughs> I can go with, you know, it has a Lycoming engine, but it's a nice plane. It had a two G5s and steam gauges the rest of the way. All right, cool. So you're going old school, kind of. Yep. Awesome. So how did you feel that day? You get up and you're like, I'm gonna solo today. Or, so, or did, did was you know? a surprise, yeah. So I, I knew well beforehand because planes kept going down for maintenance or there was weather on my solo days. And so I finally, this was the day that it was clear weather, low winds, it was about like four knots, you know, so perfect weather, clear blue skies and it was the day I was going to solo. Yeah, awesome. Sounds a lot like my solo day. <laughs> uh, you, did you go up with the instructor for a couple of turns around? or? Yes, so we went up for three touch and goes, and he's like, okay, you're on center line, you're landing it nicely, and go for it. We taxied back to you know our flight school's little ramp. He got out of the plane, and I went up, did another run up, and it was go time. All right, take us through, moment by moment. So. You know, how many solos, uh, how many touch and goes did you guys do on your guys' first solo? I did three. I did, yeah, I did uh, uh, three full stop taxi backs. Oh, I did, oh, I did three touch and goes. I yeah, didn't. no, I did full stop taxi backs. I wasn't um, playing around. So, <laughs> I've heard everywhere it's three. I wanted to do one for my best friend. 
Oh, uh, and nice. so I had completed my three, you know, not the best landings, but I put it on adequate. the ground. <laughs> yeah. Adequate. Yeah. Adequate. 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 Uh, so now I'm on my fourth run around the pattern. And this is when all that happens. So this is the one for your friend. This is the one for my friend. Wow. I know. Oh my goodness. How crazy is that? But I'm situated on a downwind and that's where it really begins. Uh, I hear ATC tell me, hey, we have a red cirrus entering the pattern. Uh, can you widen your pattern 15 degrees? And so I turn 15 degrees to the left. Uh, I'm landing on 17 right because that's our touch and go runway. We have parallel runways. I, and he, he comes in real fast. That's the first thing I notice. I'm like, man, this guy is fast. I'm like, man, he's going like 180, 190 knots. And I, I don't wow. know the V speeds of his plane, so I don't really know if that's fast for him or slow for him. No, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is not normal. So he's going along. I see him in the pattern. I'm like, okay, I'm pretty good. I should be set up for the landing. I'm at midfield at this point, and I do my checklist, and you'll see gumps, like everyone does. Mm -hmm. And I I'm, I'm, have my checklist done, following him into land. He turns base. I'm falling right behind. I'm on the corner of turning base. And then out of the corner of my eye, I just look up, and I'm like, huh. He was told about parallel traffic, so I look for the parallel traffic, green key lime. Mm -hmm. Right, they're pretty easily like seen from the earth. They're yes and they're no. They're lime green. Okay, explain that. So the ground is green. Oh. So if you're above it, <laughs> there you go. I know it's rocket science here. That's interesting. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're turning that base, you're headed west. I'm flying early in the morning. What comes in the west? Mmm, something, something. You mean east? <laughs> It comes in the east, but the sun angle just shines on that plane. Okay. Yeah. And oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm assuming maybe that had something to do with it, but he was a little bit higher than the key lime. I see them both, and then I look back down, make sure I'm, you know, not overspeeding or anything, and I'm doing well, but I'm nervous, right? It's my first solo. And so I look up, and I see the Cirrus in a very downward attitude, and I can't actually see the key lime chunk taken out of it, but Sirius was in a downward attitude, and I'm like, he's getting real close to that plane. Huh, he's not slowing down. He just goes past him. And then he banks very hard down towards the ground. And I'm like, oh, interesting. I don't know what happened. They got really close, but I don't think they hit. And then I see him pull shoot. Wow. Wow, so you actually got to see. The shoot deploy and everything. That's crazy, yeah. okay. And so, I, I see the key lime guy, but it doesn't look like he has anything out of his plane. Maybe it's just I have bad eyesight or something, or he was just too far away. But I'm on base at this point, and I'm like, I can't follow him anymore. He has his chute pulled. No, you got aviate, nav navigate, <laughs> communicate, and fixate. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, yeah. And at that point, uh, I, I listen to the ATC controller, and he says, uh, be careful, do not overshoot final, there is an aircraft in distress. And that's when I tell him, hey, uh, he just pulled shoot. Because I didn't want to talk if that serious right. guy is trying to talk, so. And Tower, uh, there's another one, it's probably a serious that dropped the parachute um, final for 1117. Thank you. I let him use the comms because he's on my frequency. We have two frequencies, one for the left runway, one for the right one right. runway. And so I let him talk, he doesn't say anything on the radio, and I'm just watching him. The Cirrus? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just watching his plane just float down, and I'm like, okay, so I can fly over him. And that's what I do. I fly over him, and I look down, I see one guy standing up, but I'm not gonna put information that I don't think right. Is can it? be verified, right? But they ask me, hey, if you could give me an accurate location of where that guy went down, I tell them to the best of my ability. Cessna 251, do not overshoot final. There is a, an aircraft that is in distress just south of Cherry Creek Reservoir. Yeah, they just pulled shoot 251. Cessna 251, if you can give me an accurate location, we would appreciate it. They're about two miles by those buildings right off uh, 35. Yeah, I see a parachute. Yeah, the uh, parachute is just south of the reservoir. It's uh, in the, uh, in the airport uh, vicinity, just south of the reservoir, correct? Yeah, about a mile from the reservoir. And it's surprising that it was like spot on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one, one mile from the uh, reservoir and two Denver? from Denver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would have said. <laughs> so I, I see him on the ground. I see someone outside, so I'm like, okay, 
they should have landed safely. And then I see the key lime on the runway. I look at my airspeed and I'm like, damn, I am very fast. <laughs> I gotta slow this puppy down. And you don't have a chute. I do not know. <laughs> so power back. I just dump a lot of flaps. Once I hit that 100 to 10, I dump 10, and then 85, I dump the rest. Right. And so I slow my plane down, and not my best landing, but I put it on the ground. I taxi out. It's better than the Cirrus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He could not use the plane the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I taxi out on a Bravo, and then they close the runway for FOD removal. And so I'm just sitting there. I take a Snapchat. You know, I'm like, hey, I just saw a plane pull a parachute. And, a, and, and a mid-air collision where yeah. nobody died. That's that's a miracle. But did you even know that it was a mid-air collision at that point? I didn't think it was a mid-air. Yeah, because the key lime landed. Yeah. The, and that pilot was amazing. Yeah. He was so calm on the radio. I heard the comms on He's the like, other I guess I lost an engine. Yeah. Yeah. So he, yeah, he didn't realize he had even had a mid-air. No, he's just like, right engine failure. I'm still... Oh, I want to know what was going through his head. At I know. That, like, after he realized he just got whacked by a Cirrus... You know what I mean? Like, uh, if anybody knows how to get in touch with that pilot so we yeah. could talk to him, that would be amazing because I, w I really want to know what was going on through his head. Like, he was so cool and calm. Okay, I'm landing my airplane single engine. I've practiced this. Who practices a midair? <laughs> you know? It's like practicing dying. Yeah, so literally, you, he pulls off the runway and he's like, uh, I mean, oh my goodness, holy cow. Like, I have a chunk missing out of my airplane. So you I know? don't think... He has like forward visibility, but he doesn't have rear visibility. Exactly. So he has no idea. And did, have you seen pictures of the key lime plane? Oh yeah. yeah. It's like someone just ate a bite out of it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the only reason I think his plane stayed together is the key lime uh, sewer pipes are actually have uh, reinforced floorboards because they carry cargo. So, wow. So that floorboard was the only thing keeping his tail end on. Wow. That is, yeah, that's amazing. That's crazy. All right, so, you know, every flight's a learning flight. What was your biggest takeaway from your first solo? Don't hit another plane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good takeaway, yeah. Yeah, slow down maybe. Slow like, down, yeah. Slow down when you're, especially be cognizant when you're on parallel Keep runways. your head out of the cockpit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you saw this stuff. I mean, I might have been, yeah, I might have missed it because I was looking here or there. Yeah, if it's a nice VFR day, why are you looking inside? Yeah, nice, <laughs> okay. All right, well, I wanna do something we haven't done because of the pandemic days is have our studio audience. So I'd like to open it up for some questions that they may have for you. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we have set up a microphone. We're gonna try this. This is the first episode we're doing this. So what I'd like, if audience, if you've got a question, come forward, stand at the microphone, and let's ask it. So uh, Julian, I know you. Um, Julian's a young pilot who just soloed. Yes, sir. Hey. And did you witness a midair? Oh, heck no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, what's your question? Um, so my question to you is, um, well, sorry. Oh, shoot. Pun intended, of course. <laughs> um, but so uh, I, I soloed December 4th, and I'm the type of person, uh, just learn it by the book, but also you gotta got got to gotta have that kind of a common sense to know certain things in the plane as well. So... When you saw that happen, did by the book go through your head or just uh, by discretion go to your head? So I think it was pretty much instinct at that point. Right. It was my instructors has drilled these, you know, practices into me for the past, you know, 30 what hours. And I was like, OK, I'm just going to do what I would normally do. And that's what I kept doing. Primacy. Well, yeah, I was about to say it speaks to primacy. Yeah, primacy is, is so, so important. So I think it was just purely instinct. I said, hey. I see something bad going on. I'm going to help as much as I can, but I'm going to make sure that I don't clog Contribute. the system. <laughs> yeah. Right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. Who's next? All right. So as a student pilot, you really just completed your, um, what you needed to do. And you're on one more final leg for your, your friend that passed. And then you, you watch all this happen in front of you. What did that do for you mentally as far as you getting back into getting back into the cockpit and flying again after that. So I always set clear goals for myself. I know why I'm doing things. And that mid-air collision was not going to stop me. Literally two days later, I went back in the cockpit and flew the plane again. Were you scared? Nervous? No. Anxious? I know why I'm flying, and that's all I need. 
Uh, so my question is basically, I'm curious, um, as a student pilot, you ran into a situation and granted it, you weren't the emergency aircraft, thankfully, but I'm curious about how your CFI reacted and what sort of yeah. feedback he had about what happened and if he took any takeaways from that as well. So during my flight, he was on live ATC listening to you know, audio of the tower. And when he heard pulled shoot, I don't think he realized what happened, but right after me, someone in the pattern behind me said, yeah, that was a definite midair. And he comes running out, he told me. He came running out to try to see the chute come down. Did he, he think it was you in the midair? No, or, no. no. Oh, okay. Because he heard me on the radio say, shoot. pull shoot, yeah. yeah. Okay. So was there anything that came out of the debrief with him later about it, or was he just like, good job, it wasn't you, I'm happy? <laughs> yeah. he, he said you, you did a really good job of you know playing that situation out. You don't really expect that on your first solo or really ever, but... Hey. And he said, you're ready for your, your check ride. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, great questions. And thank you so much. Uh, great things to, to take away from that. Uh, now, to, to close it out, have you, gotten your, have you gone through your check ride? Take us up to date now. Yes, I, I've completed my private pilot's license, and I'm, about, I'm at about 80 hours. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm currently working on IFR. You know, it's, it's a little bit of money, but so I'm doing it a little slower. Right, but slow but sure. Aviation does cost quite a bit. I, <laughs> I learned. Yeah. So. All right. Well, awesome story. Thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, if you guys have any feedback or questions, please leave your comments below. Like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time. In the hangar. Bye.